Now, I'm not going to be an ass and say there's no uh, legitimate criticism of Christopher Nolan. There are of him in his films. Not His films are not perfect by any means. And there are some reasonable complaints and concerns when it comes to his style of filmmaking. One of them is not the tone of his movies. The entire thing, everything that made Batman work as a trilogy under him was the tone. And the, what separates DC and Marvel in this regard is Marvel was willing to experiment with that tone way back in with Daredevil and Hulk. And they couldn't get it right. And then Christopher Nolan came in and kicked their ass. And that's when someone at Marvel said, we're not going to beat Christopher Nolan in this game, so we have to switch gears. And that's when Iron Man came out and Incredible Hulk and Thor. And it kept a certain realistic tone, but it was their reality. It was a reality where Thor and Captain America could ex- and the Hulk and all these other creatures and beings could exist. So it did the best job of world building I think any series of movies has done possibly since the first Matrix. You can have your own opinion about the other two. Well, Lord of the Rings would be a better it would be a better kind of, it would be a better example in this regard because you believe that in that reality of that trilogy the world and the characters are plausible and real for that reality. Same thing goes with Marvel. And now DC wants to be Marvel so bad because Avengers did a stupid little two hundred million weekend. The only movie other than well, the only movie while Christopher Nolan's trilogy was running, and I'm going to get into why I make that distinction in a minute. To make a billion dollars at the box office worldwide, it they want to be that so bad that they're willing to throw anything and everything under the bus to get it, and it's going to cost them with this one. I really believe it does because here, let, let me just give you some numbers. And some facts here. Uh, Everybody likes to talk about Rotten Tomatoes scores since Man of Steel came out. Oh, Man of Steel's got whatever. It's got under 60%. It's certified rotten. None of the Nolan movies, none of the Dark Knight trilogy was under 80% at Rotten Tomatoes. It was all over 80%. With Marvel, with their cinematic universe, which for the purposes of this discussion goes from Iron Man to the Avengers because it's the same time span that Nolan took to make his three. Uh, Only two are over 80. Again, I'm not... Personally, Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, uh, the three of us have an understanding, to put it uh, nicely. Uh, I don't always put a lot of weight in those sites, but since people want to put weight in those sites... When it comes to critical preference, that sides with Nolan. But, uh, okay, let's go to something that I actually do put a lot of weight in, and that's money. Uh, for the Dark Knight trilogy, remember, we're talking about three movies released over roughly an eight-year period, roughly. Three movies... Total worldwide growth for the Dark Knight trilogy rounds out to around $2.5 billion. Now, I know what you're saying. What, 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 does that, what, what does that matter? Let me lay out the rest of these numbers for you. The total worldwide growth for the Marvel Cinematic Universe up to Iron Man 3, because again, keeping in the time span of how long it took Nolan to make his movies, uh, it made an estimate of $3.8 billion. It took six movies to get a grand total of $3.8 billion. It took Nolan three movies to make $2.5 billion total. Now, in sports, <laughs> I know everybody here with elementary math will say, well, one number is still bigger than the other. In sports, the guy that can make you the most money with the least amount of effort is the one you want on your team. And sports business, it all it's all the same really here on this show. So looking at it, just on, on an outsider looking in, using common sense, you will 
pile money, just bringing in dump trunks of money and just dumping it out on Christopher Nolan's front door to make sure that he stays somewhat involved in the making of these DC movies. If it's just to come in one day, read the script, and go through it with a red ink pen, and then leave the next day. That's worth $10 billion to you. <laughs>